What do you think the American dream looks like in 2019? It is Lil Nas X on the cover of Time Magazine. <laughs> no, but like seriously though. Hey, it's Kara Price from Bellatrist. And Ebony Liddell from Epic Reads, and we are here with the fabulous Mary <laughs> Ishkay Choi. She is the author of the New York Times bestselling book, Emergency Contact, and now we're here to talk about Permanent Record. We have the Book of the Month edition right here. I really love this book. I know, I did so. And <laughs> I was gonna say, it follows the life of Pablo, but that's also a record. Um, it does follow the life of Pablo, who is an NYU dropout, who is working at a bodega, and it deals with the theme of the American dream. I think that for most people, the concept of the American dream has changed, you know, post 2016 even. Mm. The question that I have for you is, what do you think the American dream looks like in 2019? It is Lil Nas X on the cover of Time Magazine. <laughs> no, but like seriously though, like that is That's that it. is a trajectory that you right. look at and you're yeah. like that. Like we're not talking about like Horatio Alger as like bootstrap, da 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 da, -da. Mm -hmm. Like you don't like work your way into middle management and then become the thing and you have the same job for 50 years and you're taken care of. Like now it's all permalance culture. Mm -hmm. Everyone is a brand unto themselves. Mm -hmm. Everyone better be like a crackerjack marketer, publicist, everything. And so the American dream is this like weird, like capitalistic thing of like feeling like very singular and then also feeling very alone in that. Like I think that even the dream of becoming like a quote unquote creative, you're like, <laughs> what even is, right. mm -hmm. you know, also whomst? Like, <laughs> you know, it's like when you talk to any creative director, you're a little bit like, mm, you're a liar. You know I mean? <laughs> I'm a creative director. Yeah, right. like what do you do, I can't fall. It's like, right. you know, you're like, what is that? Like yeah. what? assets are you actually like creating like what is the actionable like oh, all these horrible words deliverable <laughs> like you know whatever but like it's really true and i think that the american dream in 2019 is that nebulous and so you have an entire society <laughs> i'm like you have an entire society you no know, you have like all of these young people who are so good at things mm -hmm. yeah you know yeah. like and okay, qualify yeah yeah and like but they can't talk to people on the phone. They can't take a lot of like constructive criticism and then apply it to their workload. Like, you know, I work with a lot of young people um, and just talk to a lot of young people. And anytime there's an assignment, like I realize that there's this huge like pressure for them to go away and do something despite being really fearful about not having enough direction. Mm -hmm. There's this like weird thing that happens with like older generations working with younger people where we think that the younger people are so good at everything that they've got it all figured out. Mm. And the younger people are just like, oh my God, the, in, the entire economy has been in shambles since I was alive. Yeah. So I'm so lucky to be here, ask no questions. Yeah. And so that becomes this like very frustrating, like resent filled sort of thing and what I really would hope more for with like going forward is like just like more like collegial trust and like more communication and so I think the American dream is less about like going viral and being able to capitalize off of that and more being this like thing that you can sort of like grow brick by brick step by step and like that's what Pablo learns like Pablo is like um a mixed race Pakistani and Korean kid. And so he's got like very different types of like cultural expectations foisted upon him, especially as a firstborn son. And so that's also a huge part of it as well. And again, like youth culture, like <laughs> mm -hmm. it, I think that it would be terrifying to be a part of youth culture. I think that if you even drink the Kool-Aid and go through college and then you're like, cool, I've mortgaged my future like in hundreds of thousands of dollars, it's like, that is just agonizing to me. Like, I just can't, like, I just have so much empathy and like so much compassion for people who are in that position to then be like, and somehow I have to become like a creative director. Yeah. Like what even is the direction there, you know? Right. So let's talk about youth in general, youth culture. The youth, yeah. the youth. I'm just kidding guys. So there's this expectation when you turn 13, 18, you're supposed to have everything figured out. Your career, your goals, your life, your finances, all that stuff. And that's just not realistic. We see that with Pablo. Like he's supposed to go to a good school, get a scholarship, but that doesn't necessarily pan out the way he wants it to. And it's really hard for him. Was that sort of like your experience? Was it similar to Pablo's? 
I mean, I worked through college. Like, I worked at Neiman Marcus, <laughs> um, you know, and that was like a huge part of the college experience for me. I deliberately yeah. um, went to, I went to UT Austin. I went as an in-state student. I applied to one place, got in and went, and I graduated without any student loans. Mm -hmm. And that was like, I say that in a way that makes it sound like I paid for everything and that's not true. Like I had help from my parents, but we did have a discussion where I was like, I want to go to Bennington. And they were right. like, Psh, no. <laughs> you know? and like, Most expensive school. Yeah. And, uh, and then they're, they're just like, you're not getting a unicorn and a rainbow heart for like your degree. Right. Like you're actually going to go to a real school. And, you know, I was... I was very resentful and I was really angry and the way I took it out on them was to then need to go to school for five years because I <laughs> changed my major like twice. But yeah, like I had a very, very specific college experience and I didn't want to go and I knew that I just wanted to be done with it. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't buy into like, I need to go to a name brand school, I need this, I need that. And because UT was a good school and it was like, I was automatically eligible to go in because I was a certain percentile of my graduating class, mm -hmm. and that was it. And I'm so grateful yeah. that that was my experience. You remind me of this sort of issue that we have right now that I actually think the internet, or coming up through the internet, has somewhat democratized, which is that like the meritocracy is real. I do wonder if another sort of positive thing about us being more connected through social media and social media some kind of creating jobs is that you don't necessarily have to have a trajectory that will put you into hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt. I mean, I think that that's kind of the other flip of the dream, though. Like, everyone's just like, well, I either have True. to be an influencer or mm -hmm. I have to be a disruptor. And mm -hmm. so the, it right. bifurcates this whole thing. And it's kind of the same scam. Like, mm -hmm. the thing is, like, everyone's just like, oh, the technology is so magical because, you know, it really just, like, lowers barriers to entry. And I'm like, sure, it did. But, like, look at any music streaming platform right now. Right. Like, this is not the great democratizer. Like, if you get on, like, rap caviar, you're basically made. And, like, that is almost as like old school as terrestrial radio systems right. where it is like kind of payola. Mm -hmm. It is about which yeah. Yeah. baby to kiss and like yeah, yeah, which true. D to S or whatever. Yeah. And like there is this plausible de deniability of being like, oh, we're, we're this way and we're not that. But it's all the same thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we live in an oligopoly. Like mm -hmm. that's just what it is. And it's it always sort of capitalism always sort of finds its way finds to its way. this model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if there's one thing you wish for a reader to take away, what would it be? Just that like, you have to buy the book really soon. Um, <laughs> no, just that like, things just aren't always as they appear. Things are very, very layered. And also that you are very, very allowed to feel complicated feelings about yourself. And that youth and youth culture isn't this like one thing. And that taking things slow is okay. Mm -hmm. And being uncertain in your exploration of like pursuits is also really okay. So if you haven't bought Permanent Record yet, I don't know what you're doing, um, <laughs> go buy it. Make sure to like our videos, make sure to comment, tell us what you think. Make sure to follow us at Bellatrice, B-E-L-L-E-T-R-I-S-T. And Epic Reads. <laughs>